Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with Sins of Tempo County Corso. I'm out here with Cashmere, Velocity, Midnight, and Blondie. <clears throat> I went over and I saw, I got these new kennels um, in the mail today, but I had to have them sent over to the old house because uh, they can't find my address here. <laughs> Sucks. Um, Amazon even like refunded me because they couldn't find my address for my coffee. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so, uh, <clears throat> went and got those kennels and I hung out with her and gave her some love. And so, um, like I said, it's, it won't really be like, um, I mean, for you guys, it'll be like she's gone, but, oh my God, look at that. Oh gosh. Um, but for me, it won't because I'll see her all the time. So Alex has been over here helping me clear out the, um, the trees. We're going to, um, get a wood chipper. So, or I should say I'm going to get a wood chipper, but he's, um, helping me look at, look how they're all happy smelling it. Especially velocity. That's the one thing about breaking up whenever you're you got dogs. Is they don't take sides. <laughs> oh, look at that big old stick. So we got more pups. I think I have a puppy leaving tomorrow. And then another puppy leaving on Saturday. And then we did find Napoleon a home. He's officially going to be um, living with a super awesome family here and locally. Um, so I'll be able to provide any kind of support for them that they need with him. Um, if he needs training or boarding or anything like that, but, um, he's going to stay here until after the holidays, but they did, um, they did place their deposit. So we know for sure that he's going with them. So very exciting. These people have wanted a Corso for many, many years, and now they're getting, um, you know, a really awesome, sweet dog, um, which actually comes right off of some import lines. So very cool. And then I spoke with his breeder, and um, he did a breeding already um, that I was looking into. And most likely I'll get a... I'm not sure. I have first pick on it, so I don't know if it'll be male or female yet. It just depends on where the quality's at on the litter, like which which dog has the, the best quality. Um, and that's the one I'll go with. So, Because if it's one thing I've learned recently, it's that... <clears throat> Unlike the pit bulls and like other more common, um, more heavily populated breeds, there is a genuine lack of quality in the Corso community for breeding dogs. Um, you know, there are, you, you would, if, if, <laughs> so the way the laws are, it's like, theoretically I should be able to use someone's photo to critique the structure of the dog. Okay. You should be able to use it for, um, critique. However, um, there are people that don't want the, they don't want for their dog's, um, faults to be exposed. And so, um, they will, um, you know, they'll try to twist it and, and, and do copyright stuff. And so it's just, it ends up not really being worth the fight, worth the hassle. So that's why you rarely ever see people like, like actually trying to educate on the faults on dogs. Um, you know, I'm going to be, uh, creating a group for, um, the people that have bought for me that are interested in being breeders. Cause like I've said, I don't just offer breeding rights. It's something that has to be, um, worked towards, you know, like, cause you have to actually have the quality for it. You have to have the skill. You have to be able to find faults and know what to look for. If you can't, then you really shouldn't be breeding because you're basically the blind leading the blind. 
and I want to use my dogs, but the thing is, is that my dogs don't really have a lot of faults. They're not perfect. They do have faults, but they're not, they're, there's not a lot. And you guys know, I tend to point them out. I pointed out the fact that, um, Velocity's eye set is too wide. Um, but I will say that there are new things that I've learned. Like, um, you know, I need to make sure that I mind my, uh, croup and tail set on my dogs because they can be a little low. Um, and so it's not a huge thing, but it is something that, that I need to be aware of. Look at that. Savannah's got a puppy. Cashmere didn't recognize her. Why are you bringing that puppy out here? Well, keep an eye on him. Don't let him get run over because they're playing rough out here. Mm. So anyway, so I'm going to try to do my best, um, but just keep in mind that I'm limited. I, I really just can't, I really am not at liberty to show you guys the faults that I see in other dogs that may even be more numerous or even, um, um, or even more uh, dangerous to the dogs. <clears throat> That's our boy. Yeah, you just showed her. Look at him. What did your face? Solo. Solo. <laughs> hey, what's the face? You know, play? What's the face? No, Savannah. No, 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 no. Can't play. No, I, he, look, you see how they came over immediately? I'm not going to let them. Because all they're going to try to do is show him where he's at in the pack, which is at the bottom. And it's just not a good space for that. There's cactus. There's... He won't be at the bottom forever. He won't be. No, not at all. But nonetheless, I, I just don't want him to get run over out here. It's not a good. It's Thank not a good place. place. <laughs> <clears throat> so, not a good place. Like for me to control the environment enough to keep him safe. I'm scratching the back of his ear over here. And he's completely. completely... <laughs> he's turning his head around. What are you doing? You like the scratches? What are you doing? What are you doing? Squishy face. You got preacher's face. You got your daddy's face. You've also got his coat. Yep, he does. He has a fuzzy coat. He's fuzzy too. Not as fuzzy as Chinchilla, but yeah. he's fuzzy. Although maybe Chinchilla was just more noticeably fuzzy. Because look at him. He's Hold getting on. more. Hold on now, Savannah. Hold still. I'm trying to do something. I'm trying to show you guys from the top of his head. How when you're looking for is for the muzzle to be as wide as it is long. Can you see that? It's good. You got a good muzzle. He's trying to bite your finger. And the reason that those things matter is because it adds to the expression of the dog. Yes. Unfortunately, the oh, look at that. Just... Yep, yep, yep. Good movement there. Good movement. They're like little reindeer, just like choo -choo 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 -choo, prancing around. <laughs> no, you're not getting down solo. You got to stay. It's not my fault she brought you out here. Teasing you. He's like, nah, man, no one down. I can, I Teasing can get, you. I can get it. Hey. Solo. He doesn't know his name yet. Solo. We did not name him after Star Wars. No, not Han Solo. It's Solo Uno. Solo Uno. Mwah. You say hi. Yeah, I had a dog named that. Um, I tend, I'll be honest with you, I tend to recycle names in my dogs. Because they're such good names. So, um, not all the time. Like, they have to fit. They have to be, it, it has to be right. You know what I mean? But, like, for example, Midnight, the name Midnight, I had a cat when I was young. She's my favorite cat in the whole wide world. And we had the most special connection. And I would just lay there in the yard underneath a big tree. And she would lay on my chest. And she would be sleeping. And, and just her sleeping there. I didn't want to move. And then I would eventually pass out. And we, I just loved her to death. So... <clears throat> so no they didn't and so um anyway so I had to name it just it just came to me you know what I mean that's how it happens it just comes to me like a name that I hadn't thought of in a long time just something's going on and then every now and then I have new names like Cashmere's not Blondie's not Preacher's not um you know sometimes I don't it just depends what was Blondie named after? <clears throat> I couldn't remember if it was the band or if we named it after just the fact that she's cute yeah it was a band Got some community stick chewing goings on. Roots. Yep, tree roots. I'm gonna go put him back because he's very upset about the fact that he can't he can't participate in the community. 
He wants to be able to participate in the community stick chewing. Are you wanting to participate and you can't? Huh? Are you wanting to participate and you can't? my hair right now. He's a butt. No, you know one time you I little butt? to grab him out of it and he yanked my head down. What are you doing, little butt? What are you doing, little butt? Ears are almost healed completely. I need to probably get the stitches out on Friday. He's so upset. Mm-hmm. You want me to grab a stick for you, little boy? He's so mad. He is. He's so mad. Oh, cool. He's like, unhand me, human. <laughs> Pretty girl. I'm gonna put him back inside because he's upset. Okay. I love how she blends in, man. She's like the perfect color for hunting out here if you wanted to. You know what I mean? The perfect hill country hunting dog right here. I tell you what, she's got natural camouflage. <laughs> that's, my, that's my best. Uh, redneck voice. <laughs> mm -mm. But you can see the thickness on her, man. She's just whew, thick and still very well built. Do you see how she's got lots of tuck up? I like that in a dog. Now her croup, um, her tail set is a little low. You want it to be a little bit higher, but that does run in, in her lines. Um, so you can see right see right here how it just kind of comes down too much it's not a huge deal especially like compared to um to compared to even oh nope can't get her um compared to midnight well she's she's off and her mom they both have a good tail set so it's just one of those things that i'm gonna have to watch for um in my um in my future breedings because i do breed pretty heavily off of um the lines that are associated with velocity so we're talking um Head type and um, tail set and croup are the things that I need to watch for. So luckily, those are not really super detrimental, especially if you be if you're mindful of them, which I think I'll be able to fix pretty easily. Because <clears throat> as you see, I fixed it in like it's not a big issue and it's a non-issue in midnight, and also I think Blondie's good too. And this new male that we've got, um, he looks good as well. So. But in every other way, she's stunning. You know, head type, like I said, needs some improvement. But it, it can pop up in her lines and, and in Preacher's lines. And all you have to do is, is breed to some good American... <laughs> it's going to sound sucky, but breed to some good American blood and it'll fix that head right up. <laughs> so Americans tend to focus on size and heads. And the Italians um, often focus on structure. They They have their own head type that they like, but it's not personally what I prefer. Um, so that's why whenever I bred Preacher to Cashmere, I got these, you know, I just consistently have really pretty heads. And other than, you know, Midnight is, I mean, not Midnight, um, Blondie is not, you know, she's not ideal, but th that's the thing. You're, you'll always breed some dogs that are not going to be the standard. There's just such a high puppy level every time, like unlike humans where you have like one to, I mean, you know, usually one to two offspring with anytime you have an animal that has a very high level of offspring there's always going to be more genetic variants in those offspring and so um so for example i used to breed fish and uh, beta fish in particular for um, show i bred half moon beta fish and one of the things that um you know people talk about inbreeding this and that and how bad it is but the truth is if you you know, the, the way that we get breeds and these like unique, um, uh, these unique specimens is actually by close breeding. And so, for example, in fish, uh, with beta fish, if you want to maintain a type into the next generation, then you actually take, uh, you'll breed two fish and then you'll take two of their babies, the best babies out of that whole big spawn and you'll breed those two together. And you can do that up to around, I would say, I think they say six and seven generations, you start to actually have some issues. And so every animal has its threshold for inbreeding, okay, before you start to actually see some really super negative effects. Um, and so with dogs, it's not as high of a threshold because they don't have as many offspring. And that's what it has to do with is how many offspring that individual species or animal has. So, um, so with dogs, if you want to maintain a type, you do need to maintain, um, 
a, a select gene pool, and that's what we call breeds, right? That's a select um, gene pool. And so, and within, um, within breeds, you'll see that there are different variances of type within those breeds, um, and that's based upon the individual genetics of those bloodlines. And so, maintaining a bloodline often does mean doing um, what we call line breeding, not necessarily inbreeding, although it does happen. So, um, so anyway, so, you know, a lot of my dogs, not necessarily inbred, but they do share, um, they do share some, um, similar or some common ancestors, I should say, it would be the right term. And so, um, and so anyway, so <clears throat> when breeding, you know, be, you know, you're going to get some variants like that, right? With her head type. But if I maintain my lines by breeding, you know, I breed midnight. Um, she's got a really good head type. And then I breed her to a male that's got a really good head type. And we get a couple generations away. And then maybe I swing back in and throw Preacher back in there again. And then I, over time, I end up with a very, um, a very um, stable line, right? So all my puppies will look alike. All my puppies will have the same structure, the same head type. And that's what we call a, a stable bloodline. And people pay good money for the consistency in that, that a bloodline provides. And normally that, that in historically that went along with working ability. So you wanted a particular line because those animals were dependable, um, in their working ability. Uh, so these days we focus more on looks and health and, um, not so much on working ability. So in that, I do the same thing. I, I want a dog that's able to work, um, physically and I look for those things, but ultimately <clears throat> my, my top priorities are temperament and, um, and then of course making sure that I'm, that my dogs are adhering to, um, the standard and that they have good health. So those are, um, more important to me then actually like, can my dog herd or, or, um, you know, can my dog, you know, course a hair, which I don't know that, <laughs> I don't know that anybody ever would have used them for that. I think that when people use these dogs for coursing, they use them for large, large game, not any kind of small game, but nonetheless, you get my point. Um, that with, with my program that that doesn't become as high of a necessity. Um, more than that, I've really focused on a protection instinct on my dogs. Um, I really love a thinking, calm dog. Like Midnight is like that. Midnight is observant, just like her father. Um, he watches, he's quiet, he observes, and he's almost uh, very intuitive because of that. He's like the people that are always watching, and so they really understand human body language, and it they just get it. And that's how these dogs are. They're observant like that. Not all of them, but some of them. Like Velocity, even though I like her structure temperament-wise, um, she isn't as aware. You know, she's just kind of, um, she's just, you know, she's so much like a puppy. She's very immature in that way. So that would also be an area of improvement um, for her as well, is making sure to breed her to a male that has that, that has that, that very unique sense of self almost. You know what I'm saying? Those really special dogs that they're just so aware so, um, that would be, um, that would be ideal. You funny girl. And having said that, um, Blondie's muzzle is really actually like her head is actually really cleaning up a lot. It's, I don't know that it'll ever be the standard. Um, but it's not looking as bad as it was. It's starting to widen out some and she's only seven months. So, and if you think dogs like that didn't exist in the line, go look up Tipsy. <laughs> so. And there's another dog in there, too, that was actually a fawn that looks just like her. I can't remember her name right now. But she's one of the very first dogs in, like, the first either three or four generations. Oh, God, look at her. She's so funny. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Well, I got to get, I've got to run some errands. Um, I'm going to buy a new printer because I can't find the cords for mine and um, try to get more organized today. So I'll talk to y'all later. Hope you guys are having a good day. Bye.